all right what's going on there folks welcome back here to this wonderful wednesday october 4th 2023 it's about 12:05 p.m here california time and uh did you guys get that emergency alert test uh, regardless if your phone was on silent or not it came through at least on mine i always tend to keep my uh phone on silent except for an alarm here and there but uh yeah came through typical emergency alert system nationwide on tv radio and also cell phones so they did have one similar to that a few years back all right uh, looking at earthquake activity on this fine wednesday still seeing quite a bit of movement up here across the izu trench we did see some larger scale activity along this along the section here of the filipino plate down about the southwestern corner here around philippines they seen a large 6.4 earthquake uh that one coming in pretty deep 121 kilometers deep now the deeper quakes out here tend to give us a, a good idea and uh, uh it, basically it means that there's quite a bit of strain out here against the western areas of the pacific plate in the past couple days we've seen a lot of large scale movement up here in the izu trench still seeing that today and all that pressure building up here into some of the deeper regions on the uh, adjacent side of this plate uh, subduction zone that sits down here the filipino uh, philippines trench uh, that earthquake down in there 121 kilometers deep so we got quite a bit of strain we have to watch out here in this area of the pacific ring of fire looking at today's activity here the latest a 5.0 within the last hour or so uh, prior to that quite a few fives early this morning and overnight still fairly shallow about 10 kilometers deep or so for the majority of these earthquakes so something's still brewing out here folks i don't think we're done with this activity keep an eye on this area uh, for sure uh, over here across the tonga trench area a little bit of activity from yesterday the latest one though a five point or a 4.6 here 502 kilometers deep into the tonga trench getting that deeper activity back building here uh, out on the big island of hawaii out in the pacific not a whole lot going on at the volcanoes still seeing some activity across pahala very typical swarm down here about 30 kilometers deep or so into the west coast northern california a little spotty activity outside of eureka a couple of earthquakes here from yesterday and one today 20 kilometers deep for the latest a 2.1 uh, that earthquake coming into the uh, area of the southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust subduction zone. Some activity also outside of the Seattle area along the Seattle Fault Zone. And let's see what else we got here for uh, the rest of the west coast. Anything going on here across the Salton Sea area? Stand by for a second. All right. A little bit of movement here from yesterday. We did see a, a little bit of swarming kicking up here in the last couple days. Let me show you guys the last seven days here of this area. Yesterday and today is the majority of this earthquake that you see on the map. Uh, nothing big. In fact, uh, it looks like that swarm came to a halt yesterday. We're not really seeing anything uh, picking up here today so far. At least along this uh, extensional fault system here, the Brawley Seismic Zone. Up north, a little bit of movement uh, in the last few hours 2.1 near the loma linda area that is just off of the san andreas fault the plate boundary right here and a couple other spider fault systems out here fractures i sh should call them uh, southern california is just riddled with a whole bunch of faults crafton hills fault zone it looks like or maybe uh northern edge of the san jacinto fault zone either way uh still looks like some activity I'm trying to brew down there in that area of the uh, state the Bay Area of California, one earthquake out here um, in the Santa Vanita area, 1.6, pretty shallow earthquake. And also one earthquake here from uh, yesterday, late last night, outside the San Francisco Zoo, right on the plate boundary here, San Andre or the uh, San Andreas Fault, yes, right on there. All right, Yellowstone National Park, they have added quite a few quakes there from overnight, looking at about 30 earthquakes. This is just in the last 24 hours. Uh, I was looking at that earlier this morning. Uh, didn't know the live stream went down. I thought everything was just hunky-dory, but uh, thanks there, Timothy, for letting me know that it did go down. 
couldn't tell on this end. Uh, here's some of that activity we we're noting last night. Handful of earthquakes there. Majority of these are under 2.0. Let's see what we got for the uh, largest magnitude. Now well, we did see one 2.4, 2121 last night, local time here. That earthquake's probably going to be 2121. Uh, this one right here, the larger of all these little spikes on the graph. But we did see a handful of earthquakes there overnight. There at Yellowstone National Park, just outside the Yellowstone caldera. It's going to be this black line, this black odd shape oval circle looking pattern but today so far at least this morning things are a little bit a little bit calmer quieter out here is the key word for now all right looking at the rest of the country here movement outside of pecos texas oil fields getting hit today it looks like slightly in this area one earthquake out in the new madrid seismic zone a 2.9 from yesterday see what else we got brewing out here south america handful of earthquakes from yesterday we got one today a 4.6 in the peru area a little bit further up north into the uh peru chile trench uh, but aside from that just general microquake activity in that vicinity uh, i think the main areas to watch today are definitely still going to be up around the western areas of the pacific plate now with all of this movement advancing here the momentum the general stress along this plate all that momentum's got to go somewhere and right now it's clustered here against the indonesia islands area philippines uh, izu trench up here and generally speaking we should see uh that strain build up like we did along the western areas of the filipino plate we've seen that 6.4 this morning uh, but also i'm thinking maybe up further along the java trench going up this way across this plate boundary uh, we could see enhancement throughout the day today in that area because it has been if you look at the globe here it's kind of come to a wall a little stoppage here of that momentum but that can work its way up here uh, a couple days ago we did see some activity up into china and a little bit let me go back here a couple days a little bit here into the java trench but not much it's basically uh coming to a halt right here at the the uh well that's a what do we got the band of sea area close to the java sea right around in this area is where it's coming to a halt but we'll watch for some advancement today throughout that area uh, unless we see something major going on up here across the uh, areas of this plate boundary i still think that's uh very possible just seen too much earthquake activity out here in the last week uh not counting this movement up along the japan trench we've got about 34 earthquakes of well pretty good size magnitudes the largest one is 6.0 in that cluster so and again the newest one of 5.0 just within the last hour uh, they're in that same cluster so watch this area pretty closely folks i've been saying it but it keeps kicking up all right uh anything else going on as far as any major movement goes new zealand see what's going on out there uh earthquake 3d globe there we go Looks like a little spotty activity in the three range. Nothing major brewing out here, from what I can tell. Just a little handful of earthquakes out there. One three-pointer here, recent earthquake out in Australia. Uh, the Mediterranean regions looking uh, typical here. Threes and a couple fours in this area around Turkey. Up here around Iceland, it looks like they did have a 5.1 and maybe a, another other earthquake in there. USGS reporting a 5.0 earlier this morning along the plate boundary here. 10 kilometers defaulted depth out in that uh, in that area of Iceland. All right, let's check out space weather activity here real quick. And then I got a pretty busy day. I got to get a, a jump start on. I'm already behind. Still got that beautiful filament stretching out here across the northern hemisphere of the sun. Today's latest image does show it's still holding on uh beautiful absolutely beautiful and dynamic sometimes these things will bounce off here blast off and uh get sent into space and potentially earth directed but for now it remains stable we'll continue to keep an eye on that as it is currently in the earth directed view sunspot activity well there's uh, numerous sunspots and some of them are somewhat large but they are not complex you cannot have 
Uh, a whole bunch of strong flaring without the complexity of the magnetic cores within these uh, sunspots. And right now, there's just numerous sunspots without that complexity. So the threat level is very minimal, I think, in my eye. As we look at the last couple days here, we only seen a little bit of low-grade sea flare activity with below sea flare threshold taken, uh, taken hold overnight down into the B flare category. So numerous sunspots but no energy, no complexity there within those sunspots to produce flares. Right now, generous 99% chance for C-flare, M-flare very generous at 40% chance. X-flare probability, I don't think so. Um, I don't know if these have been updated or not. Uh, kind of looks like it has, but I don't think we're going to see any X flares out there from these sunspots. All right, uh, what do we got here for weather today? By the wa by the way, the live stream is up and running. It went down at like three something this morning. Goodness, it just I don't know. Kind of been that way here recently. All right, severe weather today. We have a large area, up two percent chance for tornadoes. That includes Dallas, Fort Worth area, Arlington, Plano. And uh, back over, it looks like around the, uh, could, could include maybe Amarillo and the other areas over here. Pretty broad area. This almost looks like a springtime setup. 30% chance of some extreme wind and hail, and Texas will get it done. Uh, we're talking about some heavy duty hail and wind out there, along with that uh, severe 2% tornado potential out here in Texas. Oklahoma included in there as well, around Lawton. And um, looks like it's stretching up into the OKC area. So keep an eye on the weather today. Goodness. That's uh, due to a low pressure system that is spinning over in that area, stirring up some uh, Gulf moisture, providing quite a bit of convection there for those thunderstorms. Uh, the assembles out here, this tells us where Here's that troughing indicating right here with the um, environment, which is very unstable here. When you get all this warm moisture pulling in here, it can create some big time thunderstorms. Uh, looking at the long pattern though, at least towards the weekend, we got some cooler temperatures coming in, much cooler. This is below average here uh, for areas around the Great Lakes and the Midwest region out here along California area. Yeah, we're going to be in the mid-90s for a little bit, but hopefully that doesn't last too long. This newest weather model shows the tropping coming down further along the West Coast compared to last night. It only showed up here around the Pacific Northwest, but Northern California getting in on that cooler weather, which makes me happy. I love the cooler weather. And then after that, well, uh, things could change because that's a ways out there. So at least for now, short-term forecast, cooler, much cooler conditions out here. Uh, prevailing throughout the uh, uh, end of the week into the weekend and it looks like potentially a good portion of next week so cooler dynamic temperatures out here for the uh, for the folks back east all right have a good one folks uh, again let me know let me know if you uh, felt that earthquake or not earthquake but if you heard the uh, the alert about an hour ago, it struck here 11.20 uh, on my phone. That was about it. I didn't have the TV on or anything else, no radio. Uh, let me know if you have your alerts turned off because a lot of people have their alerts turned off on their phone and it still came through. Kind of interesting there. So let us know in the comments below if you uh, received that uh, notification there, the emergency alert system nationwide and which device you heard it on, TV, radio, uh, who knows what? Take care, folks. We will catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening for the uh, Wednesday update. Have a good one.